If anyone had told me when I was a kid that I wouldn't be spending my whole life on the prairie, I would never have believed it. The prairie was more than just my home. Some days I felt like I couldn't tell where it ended and I began. I would feel like the prairie wind was my own breath, and the smell of the earth and the texture of the grass the only sustenance I'd ever need. For a ten-year-old boy, it was paradise. There was so much empty space and enough time to fill it in any way I pleased. I would imagine I was leading a wagon train west, hunting grizzly bear with my blood brothers. Or my favorite fantasy, being the best bronc buster of them all. Some of the stories that filled my mind were told to me by my own personal hero, Jake Trumper. My father had hired him to look after the farm when he went off to fight the war. Dad never came back, and Jake stayed on. Back then, I thought that Jake knew everything, and I believed whatever he told me. But nobody, not even Jake, could have made me believe that Palomino would gallop into my life the way it did that spring. about here the most amazing horse I ever saw Palomino you say he came right up to me out of nowhere <laughs> then he just disappeared well I saw him Jake I did well hey now did you hear me saying you didn't must have been one fast horse disappear like that Good on you, Gate. Jake, look what I got here. Thought I'd bring this bridle over, Jake. I didn't want to get mixed in with all the stuff I'm packing up. You didn't borrow that from me. No, I bought it from Daniel before he signed up. For the war. Yeah, he wasn't using it anymore. That Palomino of his had finally keeled over and died of old age. My dad had a Palomino? He got it when he was a boy, just about the age that you are now. And that horse was no youngster even then, but he was fast. He was the fastest horse in the district, and smart. You know, that horse would get it into his mind to come over and visit my place all on his own, and always at tea time. <laughs> How come you never told me about Dad's Palomino, Jay? Never met the animal, Ben. Uh, I'm talking a long, long time ago. Back before your pa met your ma. Oh, but he loved that horse. 
Anyway, I was packing things up and I thought you should have it, that's all. I'm sorry, Mr. Gatenby, but I don't have enough money to pay for it. I'll have to ask my ma. No, no, I don't want your money, Ben. It's a gift. It is? Thanks. Can I go polish it, Jake? Sure, kid. You know what this means, don't you? Me seeing that Palomino out there and all? There's magic afoot. I believe so. You loved horses as much as Dad did, Ma. Well, Ben, I promise. We'll talk about getting you another horse when you're a bit older, okay? I saw him, Ma. Saw who? My Palomino. He just appeared right out in the prairie. Oh, he did? <laughs> yep. Then he disappeared, just like that. But he'll be back, and I know he's mine. That's why Gabe brought me Dad's bridle. Oh, do you really think so? Yeah. Do you believe in magic, Ma? I try, Ben. I try. I now know that at that time, magic was the last thing on Mom's mind. She didn't talk about Dad's death very often, at least not with me. But even I knew how hard it was for her to be the only woman in town to have lost her husband in World War II. And that spring, something happened that forced her to face her loss in a whole new way. The Crocus Town Council had decided to put up a war memorial. It's gotta be higher on the right. No, it doesn't. A little higher on the right, eh? Yeah. A good two inches at least. Dad. I am just trying to help. Sure that's where you want her? Julia's here to help. I think it's a little high on the right. Oh, you're right, it is. I give up. That'll be the day. Huh. You want to come inside? Sure. I think we should start back here. Oh, no. Can you believe it? I don't think Reg McTaggart ever cleaned the place. I mean, inventory came in, but it never went out. This was ordered for Magnus Hepworth. He moved away before Ben was even born. It's a paint-by-numbers kit. There's a whole series of them. Oh, I also found freckle cream Helen Pines ordered five years ago. And, uh, oh, a set of false teeth Daddy Johnson ordered in 1933. Oh, well, we've got our work cut out for us. What was that? I don't know. It's a lie, whatever it was. Not in my store. We have to get it. What are you gonna do with that? Hit him with the backhand? Come on. <laughs> If we're scientific about this, we can catch it. It's probably just a mouse. strong twine in some kind of box. A 
I'm not holding out much hope for your queen, Jake. <laughs> not much hope at all. Moses? It's here. <laughs> and what a sight it is. <laughs> careful now. I'll be very careful. It's a, it's a big investment, a very big investment. I know that, Repeat. Who do you think paid for it? I thought the War Memorial Committee raised the money. Technically speaking, yes. But since I am the chairman, the budget manager, the event coordinator... The... Just open the blasted box, Albert. And when you're my age, every minute that goes wasting could be your last. <laughs> Tribute to our boys, a grand tribute. What do you think, Jake? Impressive, isn't it? Crocus may not have sent many men off to defend our country, but we sent our best. Well, you don't know how right you are. Well, I think I do. If you did, you wouldn't have left off the name of one of the best of them all. <laughs> if you're talking about me, Jake, I ain't dead yet. God knows why I ain't, but I ain't. <laughs> Daniel's name is, is, is right there, Jake. I don't mean Daniel. Didn't you see Moses walk out of here? What's that got to do with the plaque? It's his father I'm talking about. A war hero. A man. Joshua left hands the name. And it belongs right there. What's he doing now? He's seen the egg. He's thinking about it. Good. Where'd you learn this trick anyway? From summers at my parents' cabin in Little Ranch. We used to get skunks in all the time. Don't worry, it's gonna work. Oh! Oh, he's heading toward the box. Get ready. Okay. Oh, he's inside. Pull the string. Quick. You got him! You got him! <laughs> It would work. <laughs> well, we dumped it off behind Albert's garage. <laughs> Actually, Mrs. Osborne, I was hoping to run into you, though not quite so literally, of course. I've been working on the War Memorial Committee, and they've asked me to suggest a hymn for the children to sing. I also thought it might be a good idea to read a poem at the dedication. So, I've marked off a few for you to choose from. Why me? Well, it, it's such an important event for Ben. For both of you. I mean, he's gonna lay the wreath. First of all, just call me Julia. Second of all, I'm no more important to the dedication ceremony than anyone else, so whatever you choose to read is just fine with me. Okay. Took you longer than I thought to find me. Wasn't sure whether I wanted to or not. The night my sister died, she asked me to take Lazarus and raise him as my own. You told me that. I didn't tell you why. My cousins would have taken him. He could have had many mothers. But they all lived on the reserve. She said to me, we still live on the land that belonged to our people. That's where he must be raised. I can understand that, but what's that got to do with the memorial? Being put up for the sons of Crocus has nothing to do with me or my father. Your father was born right here, and he died for something that was for everyone, not just your people. That's right, Jake. My father. Leave it be. You know, I 
won't do that. You know, your friend uh, Moses didn't come in to make his move today. Well, that's not why I'm here. Hmm. Well, you know, you're going to have to tell me what all the fuss is with his father, because uh, I, I don't know, Jake. I truly don't know. Well, it's simple. You got to get a new plaque. <laughs> See, now, I was afraid you were going to ask for that, Jake. No, I'm not asking, repeat. I'm telling you. And I'll tell the rest of the committee, too. You can't put up this war memorial without Joshua Lefthand's name on it. Will you think about, just think about what you're asking, Jake. The, the, the time and the money. I mean, it, it took us weeks to get this plaque. Weeks. Not to mention the fact that it had to come all the way from Saskatoon and the cost. Do you have any idea what that plaque cost, Jake? Any idea at all? No, it's not what you're thinking, Jake. Not, not at all. Now, you know darn well how I feel about Moses. He's in my shop all the time. Just tell the rest of the committee that they're expected to do what's right, Repeat. It's Albert who's in charge, Jake. Albert! You're my friend, Repeat. But I'd rather deal with him, with all his hating right where I can see it, than watch you do this chicken liver dance around the truck. Julia. Yes, please, Albert. What's so funny? <laughs> well, it's not something you see every day. Albert Ricky pumping gas. Customer service is the key to success. That plus a few KG investments and it's easy street all the way. Really? Speaking of easy street, Julia, I've been thinking about your situation. Alone for so many years. And farming is a tough... Tough life for anyone. Anyway, if, uh, if you ever get tired of the grind, ever feel it's, it's time for a change, a fresh start, I'd be happy to take the farm off your hands. Oh. This is an order for Daniel. It's her. So, it what do you think? Wonderful. Here I was, feeling guilty I hadn't come in earlier. How did you manage to get so much done? I had help. Well, Molly and I both live in town. And anyway, it's been fun. I guess being a new elementary school teacher doesn't necessarily lend itself to having much of a social life. Julia. Look what we found in the storeroom. Hirsch's music store. I practically lived at this place when I was growing up in Toronto. It's for Daniel. Mozart's Piano Concerto Number 25. I played this at my last recital. It's the first time Daniel ever saw me perform in front of an audience. 
And the last. <laughs> he gave me a standing ovation. You mean along with the rest of the audience, don't you? Uh, no. <laughs> they were much too reserved for that. He was the only one. Did you die of embarrassment? Actually, I jumped off the stage and I ran right into his arms. <laughs> After that, my parents realized that I was going to choose love over the piano. <laughs> Julia, that's so romantic. Yes, it was. Do you still play? No, no, no time for that anymore. Not with the farm to run. So, how's that storeroom coming anyway? Slowly, but surely. Oh, which reminds me, hold on. This would be fabulous on you. Oh, I could never wear this any place here. Maybe for tea at the Royal York or garden party? Cruise on Lake Ontario. Do you ever think about going back to Toronto? Funny you should ask. Albert Ricky wants to buy the farm. Julia, you wouldn't, would you? The truth? Before Daniel died, I didn't give moving back to Toronto a moment's thought. But since then, I think about it every single day. I've explained things to everyone, uh, Jake. It, uh, uh, explained it all. Well, it doesn't need explain and repeat. It needs doing. For the life of me, I cannot fathom what possesses you. You truly believe you can demand that we order a new bronze plaque, pay out an exorbitant sum for a second time, also that some Indian who we've never heard of... Uh, Miss Henshaw. Good morning. So nice of you to join us. Well, I am a member of the War Memorial Committee. Actually, Miss Henshpaw, I don't believe that this aspect of the memorial business is any of your concern. Uh, the truth of it is, you might not really want to get involved in this particular matter. Being kind of new in town and all, it, it's a sensitive issue, you might say. Well, my being new might just bring a fresh perspective. Sometimes that can be extremely useful. What I'd like to know is just how you managed to find out about this meeting. It was supposed to be a very private matter. Uh, what can I say, Mr. Solway? Word gets around. Well, I don't care who's here. The more, the better. I just want things done. Oh, you think it's that simple, do you? Well, I assure you, it is not. The position of this committee is that the memorial is dedicated to the Sons of Crocus. Well, need I say more? George? This is important to me. That's why I'm gonna forget how much I don't like you and how much I... Before you threaten me, Jake, which would force me to take legal action, of course, let me continue. You think this is merely simple dislike of our Indian neighbors. It's simple, all right. But in fact, it is something a great deal more. George has access to information we don't, Jake. Him being a funeral director and all. I just bet he does. Birth records, Jake. He means birth records. Yeah, that's the thing, you see. It's got to be official, and there's no record of Joshua Left Hand's birth in Crocus, so well, there's really nothing we can do. Isn't Moses Left Hand a Cree? He is. And it's safe to say his father was as well? Absolutely. Well, I've made an extensive study of the area, and there's no doubt about it. Crocus is on Cree land. This is ridiculous. Crocus was legally incorporated 50 years ago. That's what Canada is all about. The laws and charters of this land which define us as a civilized race and bind us to king and country. That's it. I don't know why I've left this go on as long as it has. Maybe because my lumbago was acting up and it didn't seem worth the trouble to get out of that booth and put a sock in old George here. Another threat? The truth is, Jake isn't the only one who thinks Joshua Left Hand's name should be placed on that memorial. The truth is, I knew Joshua Left Hand. 
He worked for me when my first wife died and I was grieving so bad I didn't care if there was food on the table. Left hand put my crop in. Wouldn't have made it through the winter if he didn't. And all I gave him in return was a place to pitch his teepee. I don't see what any of that has to do with... He was my neighbor, George. He helped me through a bad time. So I didn't bother to ask him where he was born. Maybe that isn't what's important after all. What exactly is happening here? <laughs> I believe it's called democracy. Uh, she means we have to vote on it? Repeat! Well, Jake can't vote, that's for sure. He's not a member of the committee. But I am. All those opposed to Joshua Lefthand's name being added to the plaque, raise your hand. All those four. Horse Swangle will be uh, beating down my door with a cane if I don't. I'll have some of that coffee now, Henry. Yes, a bit of refreshment is an excellent idea. I'll have some as well. Sorry, I don't open till noon. Didn't know if you were going to come by today or not. Told you I'd fix the fence, Jake. The War Memorial Committee had a vote. They're sending away to Saskatoon and getting a new plaque. What do you want from me, Jake? Nothing. Just wanted you to know that they're gonna do what's right. It's too late for that. What's the matter, Jake? Oh, just stuff you'll get to plenty soon in your own life. I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. You know, kid, what you and I need is a little head clearing time. Now, if it's all right with your ma, what do you say we take a drive over to the auction in Tiger Lily? Okay. Good. Hey, wait, Jake. Yeah? That Palomino's favorite forest is on the way. Think we could stop there? Ooh. Sure. Be back in an hour. Okay. What's auction fever, Jake? Well, auction fever's a craziness. It's hold of some people. They go to an auction, makes them want to spend money and trade on just about any kind of junk. I remember an auction in Moose Jaw one time. I went there with nothing more than a cotter pin in my pocket. 31 trades later, I had myself a tractor, fly rod and tackle box, uh, a milking cow and a bull calf, a dozen chickens, brand new Sunday go to meat and suit, I believe, and uh, a lot of fresh baked chocolate cake to boot. <laughs> I even had $10 cash in my pocket. I got my cotter pin back from the guy that took it off me in the first place. That was the easiest trade I ever did. You know, that auction's gonna be all over if we don't get a move on, kid. But I just know we'll see him if we wait. Oh, maybe. But if there truly is magic afoot... I know there is. Well, now, the thing about magic... Is you don't wait for it, it waits for you. Next time that Palomino wants you to see him, you'll see him. It was a 
was a good idea coming down here. Look at all this fine stuff. We might do some trading today yet. And right here, look at this. That is a brand new Aladdin heater. Put your fuel in there. Here's your throttle, igniter. Last winter was pretty cold. We could have used that. Some things are so ugly that you just have to feel sorry for them. Now, somebody evidently got the fever in this case. How'd you sit in this little thing? I don't think it's for sitting, Ben. I think it's for burning. Oh, look at this. Down now, who's here? My Palomino, he's here. Well, I'll be. Come on, let's go. I told you, Jake, isn't he something? Well, you got an eye for horse flesh, kid. That is an animal worth owning for someone. Me. Horse is a lot of responsibility, Ben. You think you can manage it? Of course I could. I've been taking care of old Bolly my whole life. Well, then, I got this hunch your ma's going to have an earful for us. Why? Because I've got $40 in my pocket I've been looking to put to good use. Oh, Jake! Hang on now. He's not yours just yet. But he's going to be, and I know it. <laughs> well, friends, that brings us to the last lot of the day. Our livestock. And fine livestock it is, too. We begin the bidding with some truly royal blood. Uh, in case you haven't caught wind of him back there, and always a little hard to miss in that regard, we have with us today no less a pig than the famous Duke of Broomhead. Uh, the Duke is a pure blood, registered York whore, with a pedigree that make most of you green with envy. In light of said fact, I think we should start the bidding with, say, $35. Do I have $35? Lard. $35. Did you say lard, Jake? Yep, I did. Now, that old boar's eight years old is these days, too. $35 to save the Duke his pride. They'll never get it. That old pig's not even worth hauling. <laughs> sold, sold to Jake Trumper for $35. Mark that down fast. Now, just hold on a doggone minute here, Colonel. That was no bid. That pig bit me. It said it's a bid lead. Pete and I both heard a bid. Ain't that so, Pete? Uh, that'll be 35, Jake. No. Jake, you know the rules. Wouldn't do you any good to be seen as a welcher now, would it? Pay Pete first. He'd always put the Duke up for rebidding. All right. You sell that carnivore again, Colonel. Do the best I can for you, Jake. All right, everyone. This is your lucky day. The Duke of Broomhead is back. Uh, this time, I think we'd better start the bidding with a little more modest expectations. Who'll give me $5 for this tub of lard? <laughs> $5. Do I have five dollars? Five dollars. Sorry about five dollars. Who'll give me five dollars? Five dollars. Who'll give me five? sold for five dollars? <laughs> Next up, we have a beautiful, beautiful piece of horse flesh. <coughs> Lovely Palomino. A little wild. A little bit spirited. Oh no, they're gonna bid on my horse now. I know. I know. Now listen, I want you to go over there and get in on the bidding. All right? We don't have we enough money. Just do it, Ben. I'll join you as soon as I can. Now, go on, get. Can I get ten dollars? Ten dollars I have. Can I get eleven? Can I get eleven? Eleven dollars I have. Wonderful. Can I get eleven fifty? That's not too rich. Eleven fifty I have. Thank you, ma'am. Twelve. Can I get twelve? Stuffing's practically pouring out of the poor fella. I'll give you three dollars, not a nickel more. Can I get thirteen? Thirteen! Thank you. 
What's that lamp that you're holding there? He'll be able to brag to all his friends that he bagged it himself. What do you think? 1350. 1350, I've got 14. Can I get 14? That is a genuine orthospinal special. 14. All the way from Edmonton. Really? Can I get Absolutely. I can let you have it for $15. I'll give you six. And a very fancy divan. A what? A divan. It's a very high class piece of furniture. Hey, come on, come on, come on. I, I got a horse to buy. All right, all right. Just give me your money. Where is it? Yeah, it's in there. It's pink. Fourteen fifty from the young man at the back. Can I get fifty? Fifty. Can I get fifty? Fifteen. Fifteen. I have fifteen. Can I get sixteen? It's only the true avant-garde, as the French folks say, well, now, who would have the good sense to put something this awful, something this wild and outrageous in their sitting room. I have thirty. I want it. Can I get thirty-two? I have 32 from the young man at the back. That's 32 going once, going twice. Oh, for crying in your beer, let's get this over with. 39. I have 39. Can I get 40? 39. Going once, going twice. $50. I have $50. 50 going once, going twice. Sold to Jake Trumper for $50. <laughs> Moses, I brought you some lunch. Oh, it's nice of you to work on a Saturday. Uh, nothing else I wanted to do. Thanks. Jake told me about the new plaque. Are you going to the ceremony? No. Kind of understand how you feel. I just can't seem to care about the war memorial the way Evan wants me to. I'm surprised. Cousin Daniel, everyone in town is walking around on eggshells, wanting me to be pleased with the war memorial. <laughs> to approve the dedication ceremony, it's like they want me to celebrate Daniel's death. What is to be diminished must first be inflated. Is that Cree? Confucius. <laughs> what are you trying to tell me, Moses? Maybe you don't want to remember. Because you haven't truly accepted Daniel's death. Of course I've accepted it. I have done nothing but accept it. If you go to the ceremony, participate in the ritual. Maybe it will help loosen his spirit's hold on you. Do you really believe that? All I really know is you have a son doesn't have many memories of his father. This memorial is for him, to let him know how much the whole town loved and respected his father. Seems we have similar problems, you and I. I didn't say that. No, you didn't. But your father is Lazarus's grandfather. And if what you say is true for Ben, isn't it also true for him? done this without asking me. That's a good horse, Julia. It was a good buy. <laughs> I'm naming him Fever, like auction fever. Perfect. You're naming him after something out of control. <laughs> well, he might be a little spirited, but he'll settle down once he learns this is his home. But it's not his home, Jake. Yes, it is, Ma. He's mine, and he was meant to be mine. <laughs> It's just too much horse for Ben. You can see that. Easy now, easy. Take me into the barn there. Is old Baldy there? Yeah. You introduce him to Baldy. Okay. I 
was thinking of the kid, Julia. You know what a good rider he is. He, he deserves a horse of his own. He has a horse, Jake. Baldy? That ain't riding. If that's what you want for him, why don't you just put a saddle on that fence post there? It's a whole lot more exciting. Jake, I don't know how to explain this. You don't have to. I got eyes. I can see that the kid looks more like Daniel every day. Time's passing, Julia, and he's pulling away from you just like he's supposed to, and you've got to let him. You don't know anything about it, Jake. it's worth pointing out to you that you said you'd never leave me. As chairman of the Crocus War Memorial Committee, it is my very great honor to speak about what this wonderful monument means to all of us. It stands here to remind us of who we are. A lot of that day is a blur. Where we came from. I do remember the sun shining on my mom's hair. The bravery of and how the sound of Cliff McDougall's bagpipes had made me feel strangely chilled under the hot sun. We read the name. I don't remember Albert Ricky's speech, we think except the part when he read the names off the plaque. Dedication. Merton W. Brown, James T. Clinkerby, Webster Ricky, Henry McTaggart, Joshua Left Hand, Daniel. Osborne. When he got to the end, Moses seemed to magically appear. Anybody in Crocus who didn't like Indians kept their mouths well shut that day. This monument stands here to remind us that their brave deeds and sacrifices will never be forgotten. 
when it came time for me to lay the wreath, I realized I was holding back a flood of feeling in my throat. I was glad Mom held on to me as tightly as she could. Fine job, Daniel Osborne. That was the first time I ever saw my mother cry. And the first time that I truly understood what we had lost. The dedication of the war memorial marked the beginning and end of many things. Mom finally began to face the grief she had kept locked up inside and to think about what a future without dad held in store. Me? I got fever. And to this day I don't doubt that my dad had more than a little something to do with it. <laughs>